What's up with these cats? Why are there so many cats? I don't understand. You are transparent! This makes no sense, no sense. Here on the Empire server, us hermits are of course a team, a, a, a squish team. And there are many things that need doing and I had something rather daunting that I needed to take care of next. The Cub fan offered to help and while I was sleeping, he pretty much did everything I needed to do next. So massive props to Cub who has not only built us a storage system but started work on making it look gorgeous. This centerpiece right here, the floor design, I'm absolutely loving it. So at the end of the last episode you may remember there were some like wall blocks in a circle that's all been replaced with ice. Cub has not only gathered this stuff but he's got together all of the wood for chests, for hoppers, for item filters behind here too. And this thing is practically ready to start receiving items. At the back here on the floor, you can see that we're going to store our wall. So yes, I, I did this a couple of episodes ago. Yeah, I, bi I built this, and now it's redundant. We're essentially going to move the storage for all the wall down to this space. So because of that, I need to get this circle of ice installed with some water streams. Those will essentially just go around in a circle over and over again, and then we can dump items into it that will get aligned, and that means that they can go across these hoppers, so then they can get picked up by the correct item filters and put into the storage below. So I've ripped out the old wall storage system, and you might notice that we're unloading like a lot of wall that's been stored up, and we also have all of the wall from our farms collecting into this new water stream. And it will drop, well, all the way down there and down here is where I've set everything up that I was describing a moment ago and I will report that it is working exceedingly well so by having chests at the end here like that it allows the items to be aligned on both the hoppers and the ice and then we've gone ahead and filled all of these up so that no items actually go into them but where we're storing our wall down below well you know exactly what's happening here we've got a filter set up for each and every color but we've also got some other quirkiness in the area. There are two pipes here. I've hooked them up to two different farms to bring items up from down below underground. One of these is simply our iron farm. And it looks like we've got a golem dropping in right now. You'll soon be turned into ingots, you will. Or maybe not if it keeps jumping up and down. It's found a way to survive. So those iron ingots should be... Oh, well, there you go. They've made their way up and then they get dropped into the system. And on the opposite side, this has simply been connected to our slime farm. And I've deliberately picked these trapdoors with water inside as part of an aesthetic that I hope will look really cool when we build a shell around this storage system. But this one too just deposits the items into the water stream where they can get aligned all the way over here to go around the next bit. And that's where the iron and the slime get stored. And up here where we have a sugarcane farm, Cubfan has added a module that also drops the items into storage. And that now has its place just over here. But what is the plan for this episode? It is to shift gears, to go into building mode. And for this I am incredibly excited as we discussed last episode what Fulce has started here has really got me inspired. And I have been making some preparations in the form of all of this netherrack, but when I logged on this morning, there's also this. These are Palescent Moon's crop farms that will be run by villagers, and the shape that she's put around it is really interesting. I cannot wait to start building up the space below, because then things are really going to come together. But what's important is that we're not only going to put a shell around the storage area, we're going to build the entire foundation of the entire tower directly below it and that's going to house a lot of our temporary farms and storage that we've got going on around here and we're also going to have to do a lot of landscaping and changing the terrain too it's going to be really exciting but the way that we're going to start is similar to what false has done here picking a gradient of blocks and then just a simple cylindrical shape and that is precisely what the netherrack here is indicating. I'm going to rip those blocks out and build some walls from top to bottom that's going to cover this area. So for our gradient, we're going to have bricks, polished granite, regular granite, jungle wood, and then rooted dirt. That will be our blend. Now that this is here, I could simply come in, scoop out a bunch of azaleas. And then I grew this monstrosity down here that you might have noticed earlier and just pinched all the rooted dirt from beneath. So now you understand the first part of the plan, it's time for me to get building. So hours of caving for granite, trading with villagers for bricks and chopping down trees for logs, we have this shell constructed. 
And I use the term shell because we're going to be building more around it that'll make it much more appealing in the future. Yeah, I also noticed this. There was a creeper up in my AFK spot. And uh, now it's just dancing. Okay. As we build this place up, there are going to be lots of spots where mobs can spawn emerging. So got to keep an eye on that. So you might notice there are some spots where I've used stairs and also walls. And we'll essentially come back and do a pass over this again to add more of that kind of detail later on. But first of all, I want to get the shape of the foundation that is built on top of built up. And the way for me to do this was just to put some markers in place, some rough guidelines for how big I want the platform below to be. And that's when I really got stuck in with the building and just placing tons of these blocks, which are going to be the main one. And later on, you know, we're going to load in the detail and get some color gradients going on and whatnot. But for now, it's all about these foundational blocks. And over on this side, I've built up a lot of them. There is some variance in height in relation to the terrain, but the roof area is kind of flat at the moment. So we're probably going to build this segment up a little bit higher, and I put in some roof shapes over here that will be embellished later on. And then over on this side, I think what we're going to have to do is expand and maybe drop this down, make our gradient wall here a little bit bigger. And so essentially, I'm trying to give this stuff some character all over the place when it comes to its shape. And again, this is just the shape so far. Before we do anything more though, I need to gather more stone as I've been running out of smooth stone. And uh, I also added some carpets here to get to the end dimension. Uh-huh. And we might take a trip there as I'm probably going to need to repair my pick before long and there is a new farm in the end. And uh, it's not the copper farm if you're wondering. Ah, and it looks like Pearl is trying to get some items down into the sorting system. Leva, Hello? I'm here. Ah. I'm down the bottom. Hello. Bottom. <laughs> this is always I'm confusing. Here. So I've I've completed my farms. They're functional now. Awesome. They just need those items to then pop down into the fancy new storage system. So I'll show you where I've got it all filtering at the moment. Hold on. Eh. I know where your farms are, so I know roughly where to go. Ooh. Yeah, those chests right in front of you is where everything's going right now. Nice. This will be quite so, easy then. Yeah. Yes, it should be. I hope to make it easier by putting it all into one section. Yeah, I was partially thinking that we could potentially bone meal the seeds and have that sort into it instead of having the different seeds because they're kind of useless, right? You don't really care about mm, seeds. Okay, yeah, no, 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 that's that's a cool idea. So yes, yeah, so I was able to help Pearl out with some redstone and get all of the items from her villager farms into our storage system. So we were distracted, but now we're on our way to the end. I have gathered uh, a full box of stone that we're going to smelt. And this is what we're looking for, that portal right there. I might even be able to fly directly into it. Oh, pro skills. Whoo! look at this. So I did talk to Pixel Rifts about building the copper farm with this method, which means you could go for a portal and go directly to a spot like this. So essentially the game has been tricked into teleporting you over here. It's just a bunch of precarious leaves. And if we drop down, there's a platform here. And uh, of course, there's also an Enderman farm. And I didn't bring a sword. <laughs> All I've got is an axe. Oh dear. I mean, they are one hit kill, but this is just going to be painfully slow, right? I keep forgetting that I have an ender chest. And of course in here is where my sword was. Well, it looks like I was able to get away with one there and bring us back a shulker box full of ender pearls, which at this point may or may not be useful. Anyway, I'm pretty sure it'll be in Pixel Rift's video if you want to know how this magic trick worked. Oh yeah, and now that I fly back over, I can actually see, look, the end portal was up here all the time. And uh, this is the Enderman farm. I remember a time when these used to be very high effort and now they're just ridiculously easy. But yes, look, there's a gateway right there in the middle of the void. Oh, and uh, I've flown in the wrong direction. I thought this was the main end island. No, of course it's not. All right, don't mess this up. Two out of two. Lovely. So now that I am back with tons of this smooth stone, I've gone around. And as you can see, given a lot more shape to the surrounding area, extended the wall down there a little bit too. There's still a long way to go with all of this though, of course. Now I've forgotten something rather important, haven't I? I forgot to show you the results of the redstone that we did with Pearl. 
It's basically just one of these clocks that detects items and then will power the dropper to spit them out. And it's up here in this really cool shaped area that we talked about earlier in the video that you can see she's built these crop farms. I love the layout here. This is absolutely awesome looking. And I believe this is Logical Geek Boy's design, but it's a very simple concept. The villager here tries to throw things into the composter and uh, it'll simply get picked up by the hopper minecart down below. And then down here we have the other farm that we did in Season 8 where they try and chuck it to the villager in the middle. And so because of that, all the items end up getting funneled down to our dropper. Now there was a really cool idea that Pearl mentioned and that was to change these seeds into bone meal. And I initially thought that you could simply replace this dropper here, which has a hopper on the back pointing into it, with a composter. But the way it's done is like this, unfortunately, so we have to make a modification. And I believe this is going to be relatively simple. We want to remove that block and this one. Actually, the dropper can stay where it is. We're going to remove the item filter itself. And I think this will work if the hopper here just points downwards. So now we can simply remake the filter, put the composter directly below it, and then put a hopper right here. And the answer is no, the way the redstone interacts with this stuff means that this just isn't possible. So it's at this level that we're going to need a hopper, then a composter, and as you can see it means we don't use the row of the top chest. So this top bit won't get filled up, but look, we got all of these chests right here for the bone mill. So I don't want to focus on building forever this episode, but it's time to unleash the beast, my favourite part of this build palette, which is what's going to go behind these support struts. We're going to work with a gradient again. So the order is somewhat as follows. I didn't have this one in my original palette, but I decided to chuck it in. And last of all, at the top, some light grey wall. So picture that being vertical. So down at this level, we have what is absolutely the lowest point in all of the build for where these blocks will appear. But I don't want parts of this to get lost just because it starts to go up the hills. So we will have like variants as parts of this are taller than others. As I build this up, I am actually yet to look at anything from the other side. This is the, the last section right here too. Now that we've arrived at the top, we're going to use the camera to take a look. Ooh, I knew that would look good. What about this side? Yeah, that's looking real nice, isn't it? The next problem though is that we've kind of got like just a very flat shape. Nice gradients, but where else are we going to load in some details? Now I don't think we're going to be able to do what I've done here around the entire building, but these ideas are pretty cool, right? We've got these chains that sort of scale downwards, and they go around the corner too. They kind of look like they're bracing the structure a little bit. Obviously I've broken up some of the smooth stone with polished andesite. And then up the top here, we've added in some shapes. There's a few iron bars here and there too. But around here where it meets the land, some of that is going to have to change. And did you know in caves under a mangrove swamp, there's loads of mud generating in them? This was like super easy to gather a ton of it. And while I was out there, I also grabbed a lot of mangrove roots. And those combined together give us two blocks that are going to look excellent at the bottom here. So this thing is obviously very industrial looking, and the way that this merges with the grass around it, I, uh, I really like that. But currently there isn't really like a lot of spaces to do this just yet, because I haven't really built this all out. So for now, that is my introduction to these ideas. So this is just a foundation where we can build other things up the top here too. You know, this is quite a, a blank, uninteresting space at the moment, but we could put all sorts of details and support struts for what's up above. Oh, and I didn't actually get to how this palette meets that one just based on where I was building, but the idea was that we would have these walls sort of running across the support beams and then going up the side of this thing. Anyways, it's got a long ways to go, and as they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. And I mean, we, we've barely even touched anything considering how big this thing is. So taking a break from building, we can turn our attention again to redstoning and engineering. And something I really could have done with earlier actually was uh, a furnace array because I've been putting loads of stone in here, turn it into the smooth stone that we've been using for building. And of course, all the way up the top here, we've actually built up our bamboo supply for fuel. Once again though, the machine has broken. Our unbreakable flying machine is having issues here on the server and this, this just doesn't look right, does it? When I stop the flying machine, you can see that one of the pistons on the side has come out of sync. It's supposed to be in line with all of the other slime blocks, like that one is with the honey block. And uh, turning the flying machine off and on doesn't fix the problem, unfortunately. 
Anyways, I have designed us a furnace array, one that I'm really happy with actually. And it's going to bring all of this bamboo around to a place we were actually doing some building before. That is this spot right here with the coloured wall. We've got 16 blocks of this and the furnace array that I want to build will be 16 blocks wide. So we can get started here simply by finding the middle and putting down two chests. And then on either side we're going to extend this out by eight blocks. And as you might be able to guess it's above here where our furnaces go. And on top of them, the hoppers that are minecart rail will go across to deliver what we want smelted. And behind it, as you can see, we've got a chest to store the bamboo. But we do want to store a fair amount. And what we're going to have to do here is put our chest like so, because we need space here for ice blocks. Aha, so these are actually going to stop us opening these chests, which we never need to do, so it's not really a problem. And now as I put these next blocks in, it's probably going to make a lot more sense as to what you're looking at. It will end up looking like this, our filtering system, with one big difference. And that is that we're not actually going to filter anything, because we've only got one item coming through. That is the bamboo, which is our fuel. And then when it reaches the end here, we're probably just going to have it fall into the same space as where our wall goes down. So it goes all the way into the storage system. And rather important detail, I was going to build some redstone that controls the hopper minecart that you put your items into to get smelted over on this side. I can actually just put it on either side and I'm glad I noticed that because yeah we're going to run into some issues with the amount of space here. So this thing is actually sort of all set up and ready to go, we just need fuel and over here you can see we've got a little timing circuit. Now the idea is that we'll be able to put our items into this chest or this one up here if we've got a ton of stuff. Then we can press a button and send the minecart on its way. It goes across once, it comes back and it drops two items into each furnace. But if there's still items in it when it comes back, it sets off this little delay clock, which creates a signal after that has turned off. So that means there's enough time for this thing to refuel from the chest above to provide all of these furnaces with two items each. So I thought we would have some fun getting our items to the furnace. But having left this run for a while, it seems it might not be so. Let's follow the items here. You can see we've got three of them dropping down and they tend to land in two places. One spot is right here and the other one is over here, which means it has a random trajectory. Well, actually, maybe not random. Maybe it's got like two places it can end up at and I don't know how to make it so it always ends up at one particular one. So rather than flinging items around to get them all the way over to the next bit, I think we're going to have to do things the boring way and just run it through a bunch of pipes. Maybe we could use this soul sand powered launcher after all. It kind of occurred to me that they are going in a straight line, so they can kind of be picked up like this, right? If it lands closer to this side or this side, it will get funneled into the next water stream, which takes it all the way down to the furnace array. And all this glass is temporary. Of course, this thing needs to match the aesthetic of the build. So the idea is just to get this thing up and running for now. And I guess it technically is, but I will have to keep an eye on things. This could look really cool, though, because it's outside these platforms. We could have some sort of pillar come up from below, hold this little collection area, then send it on its way over to the ray. But now, my friends, we do have to play a waiting game. It's going to take a long time for this to fill up, but I've got to remember once it does, it's then going to go into the main storage system. So I guess we should give one of these over here, one of the filters, that is, the, the bamboo. And in 1.20, we'd be able to have bamboo blocks down below, right? The reason that's not working is because we got a support pillar right in the middle of the redstone. So good news, our furnace array is working as intended wonderfully. It will evenly distribute all 32 of those items and then they will all get smelted up. But if I open it, you'll see there's nothing in there. Yeah, when it comes back the first time, this thing seems to think it's got items in when it doesn't and it goes around again. But anyway, it works, which is awesome. And you know, we spent the entire episode working on this base, but I have also done something for the Empire's people of this server. Oh, there's uh, there's lots of cats here. Yes, out here in their nether hub, I have constructed a board over here that has all of the different colors available for all of the different paths to places, and I've labeled some of them too. It is the Empire's nether hub portal key. And I'm hoping that some of them might, you know, embrace this idea, as there are a few things that I didn't want to change, where like there's a mixture of colors or 
whatever, but I've added in some extra paths that should make it super easy to find the different portals on the roof of the Never. Of course, earlier in the episode, we added this one. So yeah, just something that I wanted to do for everyone here on the server. Also, what's up with these cats? So I heard a rumor that there are even more cats on this amazing bridge that we have right here. Lots and lots of cats. <laughs> oh, there's... Oh my goodness me! I thought that was it! Dang! Why are there so many cats? I don't understand. Oh my goodness me. Look at how many of them there are. You are transparent! This makes no sense. No sense. Oh, there's cats on the bridge, I guess. And as we fly back to the build, you might notice... Oh, look, things are a little different over here. The building process is always going to be about taking things that we've done and changing them as we go. We couldn't continue to have this palette the whole way around. And it was at this point here that I decided to put something dark to sort of break up the flow a little bit. And now we've got this cool connection to the main bit. And there's just going to be tons of stuff like that getting added onto this build. I didn't really get to finish it though because, well, there's this track going... Oh, hello. There's this track going right through the middle of it. It looks like villagers are being prepped to be moved up to the top area. But I'm sure that you get the picture. We've got just so much to do and we're just going to keep chipping away at it. I also started work on uh, this little build palette, but I don't know if that's going to stay or not for this area. But yeah, lots to stay tuned for. We've got all of that up there to do. So if you enjoyed this one, leave a like. Thank you as always, and I'll see you in the next episode of Hermitcraft. Bye-bye.